record here. All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Aces Wild, a Wild Aces fan pod podcast. I am your host, Jose Ruckus, a.k.a. the world's number one Wild Aces fan. Now, I know we just dropped an episode yesterday, and I don't want to, like, swarm you with content or whatever, but we're giving you a one-two punch right now because the league, the FCF, just had their first practice today. It's a huge deal, and we have a very special guest to come on and talk about it, tight end David Misa. What's up, man? Hey, what's up? I'm uh, glad to be here and glad to be on your show and just share what's going on and uh, what the bubble is like and our first day of practice and and whatnot. Just excited to be on your show. Thanks, man. Thanks for coming on. We really, really appreciate it, man. It's cool to talk to you. So, like, so for the people out there, right, give us the Cliff Notes version. Who is David Misa? What's his story? So, who's David Misa? So, uh, I grew up in the state of Wisconsin, lived there my entire life. Uh, wasn't really recruited out of high school whatsoever. So uh, I was actually uh, looked at for some wrestling schools, but then uh, football was my passion and I knew I could go further with that. So I uh, decided to go to the best school for me, which was uh, Carroll University, a small D3 school outside of Milwaukee. Uh, went there, played uh, four years, had a great time. Uh, phenomenal time and then uh, just going off of that my experience with football there is I it was division three uh, I was a competitive d3 conference and I had no intentions of going pro uh, just was really just enjoying the sport itself and then uh, fast forward to the end of my senior year my friend who was who turned coach uh, had played overseas in Germany I'm like shoot I'd I might as well if I can. And uh, so I planned on going pro for that the summer 2020, um, playing in Germany. And that was really just going to be fun, uh, you know, being a kid for one more summer, living yeah, in yeah. Europe, you know. Uh, that sounds awesome. And just, and just like, you know, playing football during the day, partying at night, just living it up. Yeah. Uh, before I got a real job, per se. Uh, and then I was offered midseason a – a uh, senior bowl showcasing type deal called the dream bowl down in uh, Salem, Virginia. And that's a showcase from D one to D three. And that experience was awesome. So I went down there in January, literally uh, 52 weeks from today. It's called the dream bowl uh, in honor of uh, MLK. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it, it was a really cool experience. Uh, went down there. And like I said, I had Outside of going to Germany, I had no intentions of going pro. Uh, you're just uh, going there then, to shoot your shot, right? Just right, taking a just chance. Having, having fun, playing ball, uh, seeing what other competition is like, and uh, really just enjoying the experience. And then uh, I talked to four different NFL teams. I'm like, damn. Like, maybe uh, I am. Four different I, teams? I, yeah, you allowed to say which teams. ones? Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know if I can or not. Uh, <laughs> doesn't it doesn't really matter yeah. it was uh the chargers the browns um the ravens and then the colts okay so uh and it's cool because austin, austin eckler is uh is the owner of the wild yeah, aces yeah 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 plays for the chargers so that's sweet uh but so i talked to four different scouts from those teams uh and i was like wow like i'm right there so then i was uh prepping for a pro day and hopefully a camp and then COVID just hit. Yeah. So, uh, pretty much shook every single free agent or anyone who had pro aspirations, Mm -hmm. uh, just out the door. So, uh, so I was really just hanging out this summer and then, uh, went to a workout down in St. Louis, met, uh, coach Jenks and, uh, for the FCF fans that are following along, he's a huge part of, uh, what's going on. And, He's developing the playbook that's going to be what you guys choose your plays from. Mm-hmm. So uh, Coach Shank spotted me there in St. Louis, stayed in touch, and then uh, they offered me a contract, and now I'm here. And I'm excited to be a part of this. Yeah, excited man, to keep growing and awesome. going forward. So yeah. a lot, lot of things there that I kind of want to touch, get into, you know. But first off, was you're from Wisconsin. You Packers fan? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Got, so you're, you gotta, you're riding gotta high be. right now, right? Yeah. I nice. mean – it's weird because, like, I want to be at that level. So it's hard to be a fan 
but at yeah. the same time like i'm you grew up a fan just so because you can never not up, yeah exactly yeah. like i'd I love to see the Packers succeed. So yeah, I'm, we're I'm actually now. we live out of a uh, Red Bluff, which is 20 minutes from um, Chico, California, which is where Aaron oh, Rodgers' really? hometown. So yep. he's a lot of Packers fans here. You know, he's hometown hero here and stuff. So that's you know that's cool. I'm a Seahawks fan personally, but you know, Wild Aces come first. That's that's really what it's about. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I can appreciate that. Yeah. So so you're you're a tight end, right? And yes, sir. You, so you played all four years at the same school. What was really your breakout year where you became like an offensive threat? Well, I mean, I was always involved within our offense. So uh, I'd say my freshman year, uh, I yeah. started on, on the scout team, uh, played on the scout team for three, four, five weeks, and then uh, got called up due to an injury. And then uh, had three catches for 70 yards. And then from there on out, I started. Just stole the role? Yeah, pretty much. And then uh, we we were sort of a run-dominant offense my uh, sophomore and junior year. And then my senior year, I got super involved in the pass game. And okay. uh, that that's when I got all conference recognition, all region recognition, and then just got invited to senior games and whatnot. So... So the talent was always there. It was just the opportunity that changed. Yeah, for sure. I think that's it for a lot of people too, you know. Like, they have it, but uh, everything needs to fall into place, so. Yeah, yeah. No, we've been, I've been watching your film. My co-host, he's out of town today, so he's not he's not able to come in here and whatnot. But I've been watching your film stuff, man, and, you know, the, the, the routes, they're impressive. The catching game, you know, all the – that's all impressive. But really, your blocking, man, is like – that you can really hey, dominate a guy. Hey, I appreciate that. That's what that's where I take pride in. Uh, like, I came from uh, the wing T offense, and okay. uh, for fans that aren't familiar with that, that is literally you have one wide receiver, and then you have like the the T bone backfield. So you have one fullback, one halfback, every single down, and then you're running a, a tight end either on both sides or a tight end and a full or an, an actual fullback. So it is run heavy. So mm-hmm. I, in high school, I, I started from sophomore to senior year, had 15 catches. Like it was run, run, run. Yeah, yeah, so pounding I, the rocks. Exactly. So, I mean, I, I've always embraced it and I, I love blocking. So it's like, it's part of my game, you know? So I You know, I really that. appreciate that because that's, you know, especially when you're looking at the tight end and that's a position that's really changing a lot over the last few years and whatnot. And you have certain guys like, you know, Jimmy Graham, for instance, as a Seahawks fan, I had that guy for, you know, watched him a lot. And he's incredibly great in the receiving game, but the guy just doesn't want to block at all, man. And then you you look at that versus a guy like George Kittle, right? Maybe the best tight end in the league right now. And he's like just totally selfless in his blocking ability. Like he'll go all in on it and stuff. And that's that's what really, really impressed me. That's what's so awesome about George Kittle is he, uh, does both sides of the, sides of the game so well. I mean, his his routes, his catching, his, his yards after catch, just unreal, as well as his blocking, just tenacious. Uh, that's why I also get super offended when, uh, as as a like passionate blocker, seeing NFL scouts go out to these D one basketball programs and pick up this power forward. Hey, this guy's gonna be a great tight end. And it's like, man, like there's so much more to football than just like oh, yeah. getting going up and getting the rebound, you know? It is. It's really like that's what I like about the tight end position so much. And it's one that I've been following a lot because it is it requires a selflessness to an extent, right? You really have to you you're not always the focus of the play. You're really allowing the play to happen with something that's not so flashy. For sure. That's that's what I love about too. Like you get you get both sides of the coin, you know, mm-hmm. benefit, you benefit from both worlds. I mean, sometimes you get to catch the ball and spike it like Gronk or other times you just block and do the gritty work like an old lineman. And oh, yeah. I appreciate both aspects of that. That's what it's all about, man. So you get approached by the FCF, right? And it's a pretty crazy concept, right? One that you probably not even familiar with. Did you even like you were on Twitch at all before that you watching people stream anything like that? I mean, when I was in the Fortnite about two years okay, ago, like yeah. when that like that season two, season three, when it was like starting to peak, uh, I'd get on Twitch and like just watch guys stream it. But yeah, yeah. 
besides that, like Twitch is up. So you had a, a little bit of a base there, right? Yeah, just like a, a taste of it, like you know, okay. not familiar with it, but knew of it. Because I, you know, I've been going pitching this league to everybody, right? Screaming it from the mountaintops. I want everybody to get involved in this because I think it's so cool. And a lot of the people who are, seem to be the most reluctant to really look into it tend to be the guys who played the game, right? Because they're a little. You dedicate your life to that game. You love that game so much. And when somebody comes around trying to change it a little bit, you kind of get defensive about it. So they come to yeah. you and they they pitch you this idea. Fans are calling the shots, all that stuff. Is it automatic? Just like I want to chase my dreams. This is pro football. I'm going for it. Or is there a little bit of reservations there? Like uh, I don't know. This sounds a little gimmicky. I mean, I can understand how people can see it as like a gimmick, you know, like a sideshow or whatever. But uh. I think throughout the last few weeks since uh, the players have started to get signed, we've had Zoom meetings coming up to the point where uh, we came into the bubble. So, And one of our first Zoom meetings, our commissioner told all the players, he said, my main goal in our first season is to build equity within the league. So it's not like we're, we're pretty positive that we're going to have a successful season when it comes to uh fans you know even revenue etc yeah but really just creating respect within the football community even the nfl and he he wants to create this league to become a true developmental league and i think when you you look at the business aspect of the league uh it's set up perfectly like so you got these four teams there's no travel expenses we're not going to hotels we're not bus there's no bus fare there's no flying we're all in atlanta we're all at one arena, uh, and we're essentially one big team because there's about 120 guys, and uh, we're all going to be drafted out into different teams every week, mm-hmm. and that's how it's going to work. Yeah, for those and, who don't know, you guys, you're not signed to a team. You were signed to the FCF. You're an FCF player, and then you get yep. paid, like almost like a FanDuel's lineup or whatever where they're drafting you guys every week. Right, and, and then uh, with it being seven-on-seven, seven, that's that's less personnel so Mm -hmm. uh that's less paychecks that they have to cut and it just the way they have it set up it's so efficient and effective i know there's a lot of comparisons drawn with uh the spring league and for fans that aren't familiar with that that is a showcase league that happens three or four months for uh free agents like myself but those guys aren't really signed to the league they're not making money some guys Mm -hmm. even have to spend money or like buy their way in uh, to the season but I mean we're all getting paid well we get three square meals uh, we're up in a hotel like they're treating us super well and this is a platform for all of us to to grow because uh, the coaches are super professional all have amazing resumes uh, we're working with a great strength coach that's going to keep us right throughout the season I mean I couldn't be more impressed with the league itself so I can understand how fans are hesitant by, oh, it's just another gimmick league. Mm-hmm. It's this, it's that, it's a sideshow. No, this is this is legit. This is this is football. I mean, yeah. it is seven on seven, and it's a shorter field, and there's going to be some wild plays that you guys are going to be able to call. But it, at the end of the day, it's football. Yeah, and I, I'm happy to be a part of it. So yeah, and it's football at a time we're not going to get football, which is more football is always great because it's the best sport right. around, man. Right. Um, so the seven on seven thing, what about your game specifically? Like what, what part of it do you think is going to translate best in the seven on seven kind of thing? I think just knowing that 90% of the time it's going to be one-on-one. So in the run game, it's going to be me, mano y mano, uh, on the DN, mm-hmm. or if we're, or if we're running zone, I might work up to the linebacker. Uh, but then in the pass game, a linebacker DN is going to cover me. So it's going to be a lot of one-on-one, and I'm pretty confident in my ability of just winning that. You can be the man. You, the you're game. confident in that. Exactly. Awesome, awesome, man. So let's let's talk about you. You've been cooped up for a while now in you know in quarantine, in the bubble. Right. And today's the first day you got to go out, cut, cut a little bit loose with the guys. What was that like, man? Right. Like the very beginning, what was the atmosphere like? Everybody goes out there, gets on the field. What was it like? Man, it, man, it was exciting. I mean, 
like I said, we're we're like one big team. Like there's 120 of us. We're out there. We're having fun, and uh, it's competitive because everyone here is essentially trying to make it to the next level. I mm-hmm. mean, the FCF is a great league, and it's going to pick up guys every season from here on. Guys might even spend two, three seasons in it developing because uh, that's what they they want to be. But everyone's trying to grow, develop, and be a better player. So I mean, there's a lot of competition today, even it being the first day. Yeah. And and even with the competition, it's fun. Guys are laughing, doing cartwheels, yeah. doing backflips. I mean, I saw a D lineman do a a round off cartwheel gymnastic <laughs> move. I'm like, holy crap! Jeez. Like, uh, like a 300 pound man shouldn't be able to oh do a backflip God. like that. But it's athleticism. Yeah, it is, right. But uh, just great energy. Coaches had great energy. We were all stoked to get out there. I know the coaches have been here since the first. So I'm, yeah. I imagine they couldn't have been more excited and it showed on the field. So it was so an awesome first day. Do you know anybody, any of the other players out there? Or is it for the most part like everybody's getting yeah. to meet everybody like for the first time right now? Yeah, I mean, I know about three or four guys. Uh, so Christian Salisbury, he uh, he's a receiver from West Alabama. Uh, I met him at the Dream Bowl last year okay. uh, down in Virginia, which I mentioned earlier. Uh, and I met him again at the Houston workout. Uh, also met Jackson, who I uh, saw oh, you had on the yeah. show. Yeah, yeah. Uh, He's not been yeah. on yet. We're working that out. He's going to get on. Oh, all right. Yeah, well, no, you're the first guest, man. It's an honor. Oh, that's sweet. I appreciate it. It's an honor over here as well. Uh, but... Yeah, so Jackson and I have been in touch sort of since uh, the Houston workout. Uh, and we're just trying to, to match up like that connection, that off-field connection as well. Yeah. So I mean, oh, so you're already that, in. You're, you're, you want to go aces, that, huh? Hey, hey, when the Wild Aces tweeted about me, I'm like, man, I'm all in. If, if they make it happen, they make it happen. I'm I mean, I, I want it, man, because like, like I said, I really like the offensive tight end role. I think especially in the seven-on-seven format, like the D, the de- defense not knowing whether you're going to block or, you know, go out for a, a route or something, you know, I think that's going to be really powerful in this league and stuff. And I think like – a big guy hard to tackle in the open field i think that's going to be valuable right i so. think it's it's going to be one of the most important positions on offense just knowing that like you said it can go either way run yeah. pass you never know yeah especially with the you know this being primarily a run and shoot league right because right you are one of the you're one of the key players in both aspects of that right yeah. exactly and with uh with the seven on seven, it's gonna be like three offensive linemen. Mm-hmm. So uh the run game is gonna be super small and involved. Yeah. So whether we're running two tight ends in uh like a twelve personnel setting or one tight end, the tight ends are gonna be super involved with run blocking. So like you said, yeah. both aspects of the we game. We gotta get matter. we gotta get the fans out there, we gotta let them know tight ends, that's a priority for us. You know, really. Yep. So so kind of like break down like how did the practice go like what was the format it? Uh, so the, we we had two days today. Uh, I think we have two days for the next two weeks, um, and then we're broken up into little pods for like lifting and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Uh, just just to break down what we're doing for workout wise, but uh, so we ship over to a practice field about ten minutes from here. Uh, all in separate bands just to contain like Mm -hmm. who we're in close contact with. Uh, Like I said, this league's professionalism is just unreal with how they're handling. uh, They're taking it very, very seriously. Yeah, definitely. They uh, hired the same doctor that ran the NBA bubble. So, wow. Yep. So it's just, they're super efficient and know exactly what they're doing. Uh, So this morning we got up, Rolled over there around 8, 8.30. Practiced for about two, two and a half hours. Uh, got it out of there around 11, 11.30. Uh, so that's actually three hours. Um, and we did a little bit of a walkthrough and some speed training uh, in the morning. And then we did, like, light walkthrough and, uh, like, drills just to know where we're at. And then in the afternoon, we sort of ran it back and did the same exact thing but at a higher tempo. So it was really just like a first day, like, Hey, this is how we're going to go about things. This is how we're doing it. 
Uh, and then the tail end of uh, the second practice was just more competitive. Like, hey, like we're going to start ramping it up. So. Yeah, yeah. Get the energy going, really. Yep, exactly. That's awesome, man. That's really, really cool. Like, um, so, like, are you guys, like, broken up into – because I know that you guys were – you guys were in pods before, right? And are you guys, so when they bring you out to practice, are you guys working with those same guys as before? Or like, like how do they break? Because it's, well, you said 120 players are out there? Yeah, roughly. I think yeah. it's like 110 to 120 guys. So like, how are they breaking you guys up into into groups? Is it by position or are you guys kind of like? Yeah, so so we're working within our positions, but uh, when we're out there, we're all masked up. Okay. Uh, and, and we have a great... Uh, athletic training staff they're well aware of everyone and when we huddle up you know for whether it's like a not a breakdown but for like a coach announcement uh like the end of the practice everyone masks up so we're pretty cautious about uh how close we are and what's yeah. going on but uh like i said i trust uh the procedures we're taking and the doctor yeah. that's in charge so that's good that's good um so how how is it coming because you you you, did you quarantine for two weeks? No. So we showed up, uh, I believe it was the 11th, last Monday. Okay. Um, a few people did test positive. They're still in quarantine. Okay. And then close contacts of those individuals are in quarantine until they have, I believe, uh, two or three negative tests. Uh, and then everyone else was tested every single morning since we got here. And before we arrived, we had to FedEx a COVID uh, oh, okay. test. Yeah. So before we even arrived to the bubble, everyone tested negative. So I assume those people, the three people that tested positive when we arrived, uh, they probably caught it while traveling into it. Yeah, yeah. So it was so, just tough because you're going to run into people. So. Really, yeah. So you spent like a week stuck in your hotel room and then you get out today. What did it... Did this practice feel a little bit more difficult because you were, you know, coming off kind of cold or were you keeping up in your hotel room with the push-ups and whatnot? Yeah, I mean, I've been in my hotel room, setting up cones, doing little things. You oh, know. you're doing cones Just in the trying. hotel room? Yeah, yeah, of course. I got a little band set, you know. Nice, try, nice. try to stay stay active to an extent, you know, take care of my body and be ready. Uh, we got out into the parking lot twice this week uh, to do running. So obviously that's something we can safely social distance while yeah. this uh, first week is so not detrimental, but so like serious, you know, mm-hmm. you, you got to take care of that first week to make sure the bubble is safe. Yeah. Uh, but we were able to get out into the parking lot, get some strides going that's and whatnot. Good, good. So yeah, it, it would have been rough being out there without running at all yeah. for a week, but uh wasn't too bad. How'd you feel about your practice, man? You have a good practice? Yeah, I thought it was decent. Uh, a few drop balls, but I mean, that's going to happen with uh, not practicing for a while, yeah. you know, just because haven't been on a team since fall 2019. So and you're also working with guys you don't really know, right? You don't have that chemistry. Right. That you, don't, you don't know right. how hard he's going to throw it normally. You don't know what kind of zip he's putting on the ball and stuff. Right. That's a great point. Yeah. And, um, so who is? did you get to pass with Jackson at all? Is he throwing you passes yet or what? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah? Jack. Yeah, Jackson and I linked up a few times today in practice, so that's always fun. Awesome, uh, man. Awesome. I, I believe there's seven or eight QBs, so yeah, we yeah? we overlap each other here and there. Okay, so. cool, cool. You get into where you can work with multiple people, get a feel for everybody, right? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Is there anybody you know? Because like. You know, obviously we're looking at you. You're one of the players that I think that we should really go after. One of the, you know, I don't have a big list right now, but I'm going through the film. I'm really looking at guys. Was there anybody you saw today that you were like, "That's a guy I want to play with"? I mean, I don't, I don't know if I can make that uh, decision yet or presumption yet, just because first day. Yeah. No one really stood out. I was just overall impressed by everyone. There's a lot of raw talent guys from all over the place i mean the scouts uh for the fcf really gathered a lot of talent i mean uh, we worked with the receivers quite a bit today and man those guys are explosive they're fast they got good hands and i'm just ready to see what they do uh on game day you know because yeah 
I think people really underestimate like the talent level of a guy who isn't in the NFL, right? Because there's so many things that can happen where a guy can slip through the cracks, right? You look at just right. in the in the league proper, you see a guy like say Raheem Mostert bounces around five teams, is out of the league at some points, and then last year he has this huge breakout season. Everybody's wondering, you know, why didn't why isn't this guy been playing before? And it's like you think right. he's the only one. There are probably plenty of guys out there with extreme talent could really make it in the league, but you know, one thing happened here or there. They showed up to the combine and maybe it wasn't their best day or whatever, and they yeah. end up outside the league. And like, yeah. I think I you know I've been going through the film on there. I've been watching, looking at a lot of these guys, and you know, I'm I'm seeing crazy talent from these guys. And I'm, yeah, I I, mean, and I find myself wondering like, what happened? How are they not playing in the big leagues? Right. I mean, that's there. I mean, there's even guys that have been in the NFL already and they got cut and they're trying to get back Mm -hmm. there's guys like me who straight out of college are trying to get there uh just like I said a lot of just raw talent ready to to unleash and I think a great uh quote I always come back to is uh uh luck is when preparation meets opportunity so like what those guys in the NFL are are lucky to an extent but I mean they prepared. They mm-hmm. got the opportunity, and they were prepared for that opportunity. So, I mean, they lucked into that situation to an extent, but they took full advantage of the opportunity they were given. I, uh, as a Packer fan, I pay a lot of attention to uh, Robert Tanyan. Yeah, I don't Big know Bob. If you notice. Yeah, I mean, he had a breakout year, but I've been a fan of him since 2017 because I noticed the small things like his blocking, how, like yeah. – he's selfless i'm like man that's a good player that needs to be our tight end one like he's he's it and here we are like drafting tight ends we're we're doing this we're doing that we're picking up guys like jimmy graham you know Mm -hmm. and then i I think jimmy graham was actually signed before tanyan uh was picked up up as a free agent but you have a guy here on the on the back burner as the third fourth string guy who's starting material but uh He's just been preparing, 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 yeah. and finally his opportunity is given to him, and boom, 11 touchdowns on the year. Um, amazing at all phases of the game. And yeah, they, like, and the Packers even had like a really, you know, obviously they haven't, he's he's not new, but Matt LaFleur is kind of new there, and yeah. before that, the Packers were kind of notorious, I mean, if you were a fantasy football player, the Packers were notorious for never utilizing the tight end position. And oh, it, yeah, it wasn't definitely. until this year that, you know, LaFleur really started developing that part of the playbook and stuff. And, like, I mean, you let Aaron Rodgers throw to a guy, he's probably going to be pretty good, right? Right. And, I mean, you look at their offense this year, just great, just well-rounded. They put up a lot of points. Mm-hmm. I mean, they played the L.A. Rams last weekend, and they could have put up 40 on them. And oh, it's yeah. Like, and LA Rams are the number one defense. It's yeah, just... I mean, th- that's a team that has, you know, the best pass rusher in the league, the best cornerback in the league, and that offense wasn't phased by it at all. It's, in- it's insane. Right. Yeah. Right. All right, man. So the quarantine thing, you know, happens there. Obviously, you know, you say you were doing, doing workouts and whatnot, but you- that's a lot of time to kill. What kind of like. What you watching movies in there, TV shows? Like what kind of how you killing time in there? Playing video games? What? Uh, I know a lot of guys are playing COD right now. Uh, I've been playing Madden. Just oh okay, getting, hit, hitting the sticks hard, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, throw it on arcade mode. Just run some inside zone and have some fun, you know. Especially with a guy like Christian McCaffrey, man, he's fun to play with on that. But uh, he's, yeah, he's so a lot of Madden on there, man. It yeah, kind of feels like you're playing sure. with Bo Jackson back on the NES a little bit. For sure. And then uh, I just watched uh, The Nice Guys. It's a, it's a pretty good oh, movie. Oh, that's an amazing guys. movie, man. Yeah. Love that yeah, movie. That's a great movie. Uh, but, yeah, just chilling, you know. That's good, just man. That's good. Quarantining. I don't know. I mean, I'm sure you've uh, had your fair share of just Yeah, I've boring, had to do that too, sitting man. Sitting in a room and whatnot. So it's like just part of it, you know. It's a yeah. Day day and age so all right uh i want to pull up this tweet here this is one of the very first things that put put you on my radar all right which was that um alternative scouting report on twitter right they're they're always posting oh, yeah. film of these guys or whatever you're yeah. one of the very few that i've seen come in reply to it 
And this, is, this is what yeah. you put on there. Things you won't find in my scouting report. Let's run through them one by one, okay? Favorite play, <laughs> A-gap power. Now, now I've said it before on the podcast. I'm not Nexus and O's guy. You know, I didn't play the game yeah. or anything like that. So you want to break down that play to exp- explain A-gap power to me? All right, so uh, there's a lot of – Offenses usually break down uh, their their running game in zone or gap, and uh, with power, it's a gap scheme. So depending on how you're trying to hit the hole, uh, your your O line is going to block a certain way, and usually you're going to have your tight end slash full back. Uh, for me, it was a super back roll, so I'd be where I'd line up right behind the tackle guard, right in between there, and the O line would block down. And I would kick out the end. So just a super gritty play. And then the the running back's just going straight down, you know, like just straight yeah. down the gut. And it's a th- it's a three yard play. Just hey. My, Possession my, down. My guys Yeah, exactly. My guys are tougher than yours. We're we're not trying to like go down. So the your field favorite play, your favorite thing to do on the field. You're given any opportunity to do anything that day. You want to block. You're, it's not as a tight end league. We're going out. We're going to get David the ball. No, it's David wants to get in a guy's face. He wants to block. No, nope, just, a, just a good old one-on-one hit, like me versus a DN. Let's see if you can get to this gap. Awesome. Because, I mean, when you kick them out, they got to get underneath you. So they're trying to wrong arm, which is a technique where they, like, sort of dip underneath you. So you just got to dig them out, and it's just a gritty play out. A play back my junior year of college, uh, we we ran this play a lot just because we were running heavy offense, and uh, it was like fourth and one. And I remember looking across the line of scrimmage to Dean. I said, "Hey, you ready, bro?" And this guy's like, "This, this guy's still he's in, he's in his two point looking at me." He said, "I guess so." And he lines up, and and we just, I mean, I'm fairly big. This guy was a big dude too. We just boom, just. Smoked each other, stood right there. We got the first down. But you ever see that movie, a... uh, Goon, the hockey movie? Yeah, yeah. They started the movie. Hey, man, you want to fight? Sure. <laughs> yeah. Hey, pr- that was pretty much it right there. Awesome, dude. Yeah, That's it, so cool. Great All right. right next one. Next one. Plays good locker room music. Okay, so here's yeah. here's the question for you. Okay, you're, we, Wild Aces take you, right? First draft, you're in that. All the guys are there. You know, these are guys, you sort of know these guys because you're out there on the practice field with them. You're going to have a couple weeks with them before the draft. But let's just say, you know, you haven't had the chance. Nobody's passed you the ox yet, right? You're in the locker room. You got the first, you're Damn. the first one to go. You got to impress these people. Can't start off with anything. You know, you have to, first one's got to hit. Everybody knows that. What's the one you're going to? The guaranteed banger. Man, that's, a, that's so tough, though, because, like, you're putting a lot of pressure on that one song. Like, I, I love Little Uzi when it comes to just like you need one hype song to get you going. Yeah. Like I th- I think Little Uzi does a great job, especially like his uh, early albums, like 2016. But uh, for me, what I throw on pregame would be just a mix. Like I'm not sure if you're familiar with like the Big Booty mix with like two friends. I I have not I, heard it before. I did watch it. I watched oh, one of your man. interviews where you talked about it stuff. I put it on the list, but I didn't get around to it. Man, the big booty mix is it's uh like EDM, pop music, rap all mixed into one blend. I actually saw them in concert. Uh and it's just it's wild. Like it's just like a DJ session like gone berserk. Like it is wild. And right. so I, I throw on like that or like there's other mixes and it's just like on SoundCloud and whatnot and it's just like a power hour of straight party music. And uh, that's usually what gets me going. Like, yeah. That's what I work out to. That's what, like, I drive to sometimes. Like, if I got, if I got like, an hour drive, I'm like, damn, man, how am I going to get You're through just, like, this? feel-good music, party Throw music, huh? Yeah, for sure, for See, sure. See, I'm, I'm, when I when I'm hit the gym or whatever, you know, I, I need angry music. I need something. To, uh, I listen to Rage Against the Machine, something like that. Something to, cause, hey, that's, that's fair. That's what I used to be on. Yeah. That's what I used to be on, yeah, for sure. Well, now, so the Wild Aces, you know, obviously the mascot's based on Johnny Ace. Uh, do you, have you, anybody talked to you about who Johnny Ace is yet? Nah, who, who's Johnny Ace? So Johnny Ace is a recurring uh, guest 
on Kind of Funny's content. He's a um, you know, professional tennis player uh, extraordinaire, uh, John L. Ace Esquire. You should look him up. Um, the logo you've seen, the guy, you know, the beard, the headband, that's, that's him. Um, I'm pretty sure I've never heard him listen to anything other than ACDC. You an ACDC guy at all? Hey, ACDC is where it's at too. That, that would get you going. How's bells, whatnot. Just yeah. Freaking. I yeah. mean, those are those are sort of the like high school football classics, right? Your walkout music, right. Thunderstruck, Hell's Bells, all that yeah. stuff. Yeah, right. If if you threw that on, that probably that's a good first song. Like if someone handed me that ox, Hell's Bells, just for sure. All right, all right, for sure. All right, let's go to the next one. Had surgical removal of the amygdala. That's the brain cell that produces fear. That's a joke, right? That did, that didn't actually happen. Yeah. Nah, cause like. <laughs> Uh, that that would remove all emotion. So like, <laughs> you, you can't literally have that. But it's just a joke. Just like, hey, I'm fearless. Like, come all on, right, give man. me. You're not gonna you're not gonna see this on a scouting report. But I'm fearless. I play fearless, and that's just like something I embody. You know, having no doubts. Like, uh, something I used to write on my mouth guard. I wear a big like, uh, like Nookie mouth guard. I'm not sure if you see them, but the ones that you can hang from your face yeah, mask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would, I would sharpie on it like no doubts like don't doubt yourself like be fearless like just go and do what you gotta do and do you think so. that gives you an edge over some people that like you just you 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 like you really like you're going up against a guy like let's say you you're you're supposed to block a d d lineman right he's and he's way right. bigger than you and you're you're a big dude right but this guy's bigger than you you know he looks you know intimidating no fear at all you're just going right at him I mean, it just is what it is, yeah. It's just something mm-hmm. I got to do. Like, I don't know. Like, my friends I'm pretty close with, uh, they might say, like, like I'll joke, like, oh, like, big, like, NFL DN. I'm like, man, I could have made that block. But, like, I genuinely believe that. Like, yeah. Like, if it's fearlessness or however you want to put it, like, it's it, it could be confidence, I guess, but. I think it comes back to just having no fear. Like those guys on Sundays, they don't have any fear. You you don't get to that level by being afraid. You know what I mean? Now, is, it, does that come from, is it confidence in your ability, right? Like you trust that you can make a block or is it that you know you're willing to do whatever it takes to make the block happen? More or less whatever it takes. Yeah. It's like, I don't know. I think like one thing that instilled in me growing up, I mentioned earlier, uh like i wrestled so i mean if if you've ever been around wrestlers you know like there's a little like psychopathic to them you know what i mean yeah i know i do i do they're all they're all little nuts you know what i mean like they're weird they all do their little thing i mean my my dad was a my dad was a wrestler in high school and he uh he made it to state i think he plays like 13th or whatever in california and uh Man, people tell stories about my dad. They're just like blow me away. Like he's a contractor and stuff, and they'll tell stories about him, you know, accidentally shooting himself with a nail gun on the site and just pull it out back to work yeah. like it's nothing. It just like is what it is because it's like I, I think it come like that. That wrestling is just a wild sport, and it has taught me so much about like hard work and just like being relentless in general. So I think when it comes to like, hey, I gotta block this dude, it's just relentlessness. Whatever I do to block yeah. him, you know what I mean? So it goes back to A gap power. Oh, I gotta kick out this DN. Whatever it takes to get this first down, let's do it. That's awesome, man. That's so cool. All right. Brings popcorn and M and M's to film. So my so my first question about this. Is it peanut M and M's or regular M and M's? Regular M Ms. Regular no M no yeah, Ms. No peanut. No peanut M Ms. Oh no! Nah, man. I'm just straight, I love just straight chocolate. And now, okay. So the next question is: Are we dumping the M Ms into the popcorn? Are we keeping them separate? Are we dumping them in? Yeah. That sounds like. Yeah, it just sounds efficient. You know, hey, I'm gonna get. get just get, get all at once. Both the snacks. Yeah, and it sounds good. You know, have you ever done that before? Like, you never dumped the M and M's into the popcorn? I've not, but that's oh, really it's the good. way to go, dude. It's 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 awesome. Yeah, because you're getting you're getting the sweet, you're getting the salty, the butter and the chocolate all together, man. It's delicious. Yeah, that sounds good. Two time, Oshkosh YMCA, Twentieth Avenue, flag football MVP, ages twenty 
12 to uh, 10 to 12. Do you think there's anybody else out on that field today? Practice field has that kind of resume. I don't. I don't think so. No. I think that's. I think that's what sets me apart. Uh, being a, a flag football MVP, it's just like, you know, like I, I might be pretty big compared to a receiver, but I got agility. You know. You got the moves. But, uh, yeah, it's just all from flag football. But uh, nah. In all seriousness, though, like flag football. Great sport, man. I I did play at Oshkosh YMCA. There wasn't a there wasn't an MVP award. Sad to say, <laughs> oh, but uh, man. It, man, man, it was a it was a blast. You know, just yeah. like it's just fun. I oh, flag football is so good. Yeah, my my good friend, he's actually in a, like a, a flag football league right now, which is like a bunch of twenty to thirty year olds just like yeah. getting together on a Saturday, just having fun. You know, one team's like over there half drunk because they're drinking <laughs> beer. The other team's like super serious and super competitive. So, I mean, flag football is just it's a great time. So, yeah, I mean, it, it's the you get to play the sport, but you don't have to worry about walking away, you know, limping or anything like that. Right, right. You're not running a gap power when you play flag football. <laughs> no. All right, man. Um, so let me. Yeah, so I was gonna ask you like what team you wanted to play for, but it seems like you've already answered that question. You're already all in on the Aces, yeah. huh? Yeah, for sure. So uh, I've actually been like my family is like pretty involved because they they care. Yeah. And uh, they're like, what what team? Like, what's going on? Like, who are you gonna get drafted to? I'm like, you guys do the draft, like you guys are the fans so like whoever you vote me like for to be on like you guys are the draft so i was like you know what like you should go with the wild aces and i I was saying this like weeks ago and then uh i saw you got uh, you as well as the wild aces uh twitter start the hashtag uh tag uh dirty yeah uh, jackson erdman and i'm just like man that'd be sweet just because like we're pod mates uh he lives right next door to me actually oh wow and like we got we got that midwest connection like i, I yeah. said like we, we i you can ask him but i'd love for him to be my quarterback and i think being on the wild aces would be a great fit especially if you guys get him for the full year so oh yeah so i'm, I'm sure you've heard of some of the other owners obviously uh marshawn lynch Quavo, Richard Sherman. I honestly, the, the guys over there with the the zappers or whatever. I don't know anything about those guys, to be honest with you. But um, so kind of funny. It's Austin Eckler. Kind of funny, like you you know Austin Eckler. You don't know anything about the yeah. kind of funny guys. Nah, I do not. Nah, I mean that's that's I, cool. They're they're a pretty small unit, to be honest. Like I think one yeah. of the reasons that they ended up getting picked is one the um one of the guys who helps run the league, he's, he's a fan of kind of funny and stuff. And, you know, it's a, it's a community. It's got a lot of fan engagement. It's people who really care about, you know, they have their own community and they care and they're, and I think yeah. you can see that, you know, you look at all the polls they put up there or whatever, the wild aces, you know, by yeah. far have the most fans. That's yeah. That's one thing I noticed too. Like when it comes to like voting, who is the best Jersey or this or that, the wild aces always turn out. Like you guys have a strong fan base and that's a, fans i want to play for you know what i mean yeah as you want to be there with the people who really with care community. yeah exactly that's exactly. yeah we got to get you on some kind of funny content or something man get you introduced to the guys maybe i mean if you're playing if you get in the they do daily streams on the twitch and whatnot they're getting in the war zone they were doing that earlier today maybe we can get you in there or something that'd be super cool introduce you to the guys maybe you can meet johnny ace that'd be pretty sweet yeah, that'd be awesome yeah well, I mean, that's kind of all the questions I had prepared for you, man. I mean, that's sweet. I mean, that's perfect is, timing too. Yeah. Well, awesome. Did you, were you we're gonna ask another question? No, I was just gonna say, like, is there anything that you want to say to the fans, man? Just anything that you want to, you know, let us know about you? Why we should go after you? Besides, uh, you know, because I want you. Obviously, I'm gonna be out there putting you, but you know, we need to convince everybody else. So, like, what do you want them to know? That's a tough question. I just think if you want a guy that wants to get it done and a guy that's going to be passionate to play their heart out for you, uh, then just draft me, you know, because like like you just mentioned, I want to play for a fan base that's just as involved as I am. 
you know what I mean? Uh, they might not be able to match my passion because I mean, I'm sort of doing this day to day. Yeah. But when they when they tune in on a Saturday night on Twitch, I want their energy to match my energy. You know what I mean? I want, yeah. I want them to care. So it's like if if that's the wild aces, then draft me because then we'll be on the same page. That's that's perfect, man. That's awesome. Well, you know what, well, man. Thanks for coming on the show, man. It was really great to talk to you, man. It's, it's, yeah, I I appreciate your time. I'm interested interested to see where this podcast goes and uh, the episodes in the future. So yeah, man. I mean, th- thanks for taking notice and everything, man. You know, because I mean, like I said, you're the first person to come on the show and whatnot. That means a lot, you know. Because I mean, I think it, I think it shows that you know you kind of believe in us this, the way that we believe in you, man. We're going after you. I think we need to we need to draft David Misa, man. Yeah, that's sweet. I'd, I'd love to be involved. Maybe we can uh, do like a postseason reoccurring guess after a oh, while yeah. basis win the FCF championship. I mean, if that's obviously what's right? going to happen, right? Right. That's what we want. Exactly. All right, man. We definitely got to get you back on at some point, man. Talk to you again. But yeah, like I said, man, just thanks for coming on, man. It means the world. All right. Appreciate it.